the more I try to figure out what, what to include in a day in the life, I've already recorded two days in life, I've realized that a day in the life is not a very good representation of a day in my life. Mainly because one day I could be, you know, coding and then recording and then editing for 10 to 12 hours a day. And then the next day I could do emails and meetings and uh, run packages for first supply coffee for six to eight hours a day. And then uh, other days just may be a combination of both. So while this is not going to be a traditional day in the life video, it's uh, definitely not going to be one of those, uh, let's see how much food I can eat in a day, day in the life videos as all of those seem to be. It is in fact going to be a mesh of different aspects of my days considering now that I do full-time YouTube and coding and coffee business I figured you know just just take the interesting parts put them all together into this video and let's call it a day in the life so let's start with the typical morning I come on into this office and start hitting emails wait a second I did say interesting didn't I yeah, just know that whenever, you know, typically in the mornings I come on into this office, I'll hit uh, YouTube emails for sponsors or anything like that. I'll hit first supply, coffee, customer support, and anything in between. Emails, emails, emails. It's just kind of annoying. Sometimes it's nice in case you don't want to start diving into the heavy work, but hey, it's got to get done. Once emails are all said and done, I typically like to get into coding. Now, I've been working lately on an artificial intelligence project. Uh, how much do I want to say? Basically, I'm training a neural network to beat a game, a video game. But that's all I can tell you. I'll, I'll, I'll wait. I'll wait to reveal all of that for a future video. For now, uh, last week I was working on a video where I was just coding up Caesar Cipher program that would encrypt or cipher our message and writing some tests about that, throwing it up on GitHub, and then integrating a Circle CI continuous integration workflow. As a matter of fact, let me just let me just pass it back to my last week self. Let him explain a little bit more. I'll take you through a little bit of the code. The video I'm working on here will be live in uh, the next week or two. It is actually a sponsored video, so I need to go send it off and get it approved for uh, by the brand who is sponsoring it, and that brand is Circle CI. Obviously, we're going to be going into it a bit more when it comes to this particular video, but the overall idea of this video that I'm working on here, that's just, we're going from basically nothing. You have a computer with, with Windows 10, because that's what most people have. They have Windows 10, they don't they don't have Linux, they don't have, well maybe they have Mac OS, but the process is still the same if you have Mac OS. Installing your IDE, writing a simple terminal application, which in our case is user cipher, writing tests for your code, creating a GitHub repository and pushing your code up to your GitHub repository, and then creating a continuous integration or CI workflow using Circle CI in order to run your tests. That way you make sure that your code works and builds properly before pushing it over into your master branch. That is what this peak of the code. This is what we got going on here. We have our cipher. We have how we want to offset it. We have the offsetting of the actual character. We have transforming from a string into a character array in order to offset each entire uh, character. Then we have our main.java file over here in order to run what we need. We created a new instance of this class, Caesar Cipher. So all of this code right here in order to access the cipher and basically run our code. We printed out our original message, our offset, and then our ciphered message and the reason we're doing it that way is because I wanted to actually show you what is going on from here in the terminal you know we come on up here and click run and you can see maybe down here how you have the output of the original message you all set the ciphered message within that right there and then we have our test so we ran the test uh, well we created a test that is test ciphered message with offset of 12 and basically assert equals means you see the comma right here that this value on this side of the comma is equal to this value on the right side of the comma. So this right here is one value. This is us running the code and our message, how are you doing today, is offset by 12 and this should be the result. That's basically what we're saying. And then right over here, we're testing an empty string. We also created another uh, another test right here, which is a failing test because I wanna see, whoops. So I created a test, test ciphered message with offset of 11. And then the cert equals, it's the same exact thing as what we did up here with the offset of 12. However, we change this to 11, meaning this should be the incorrect message. Obviously, we'll be going more into it in this video itself, but I wanted to do that 
so we could test CircleCI and the CI workflow that we created and see how it reacts to a failed test. But that comes later in the video, not of what I'm working on right now today. If you have any desire to be or work like a professional software developer, I do recommend just going through that video because those are skills that you will need. You need to be familiar with the continuous integration and then eventually continuous deployment of an application. Whether you work on it on a day-to-day -day basis as a developer or not, you need to know the ins and outs of kind of how it works. CircleCI does have a lot of good resources just learning about it in case you don't want to dive into it just yet, just read up on it using their documentation. And then there's GitHub, which that is a you know version control. You're going to be using Git of some sort. Maybe it's Bitbucket or GitHub, whatever it may be. You're going to be using it. And then when it comes to coding, obviously you're going to be writing code. Java, doesn't it doesn't matter what language. And then you're going to be writing tests for that code. Well, I did end up getting the uh, Git and GitHub stuff done for today, and I actually think I'm gonna be able to finish this entire video today. Therefore, y'all will be able to see it sooner. All that's left, and I say all that's left, is the Circle CI CI workflow. But <laughs> I'm gonna take a little bit of a break and uh, take this nice green drink so, because of health. Bottoms up. It was good until that last, last little bit. Normally it's bad the whole time, but uh, I probably put some dragon fruit in there. So, uh, oh, but that last little bit, you get all the powder, green, green powder stuff. <sighs> Whatever. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go figure out what, what I should do in this little break. Maybe something outside. You know what? I'm before I take the break. Maybe this is my break. Maybe my break is talking to the camera for the, for the behind the scenes of this video, the day in the life video. I'm actually gonna touch on the fact that. I know a lot of my videos I talk about you know, basically structure when it comes to doing your work, especially as a software engineer. However, I feel like that structure is heavily needed when you're not working on something that is that you just really enjoy, you really like, really interested in. Sometimes you need to give yourself a break, I understand that, but when you're working on something that you actually like working on, I just like, me personally, I just like to get lost in the work. And if it's uh, one o'clock, two o'clock, three o'clock, when in my mind it's actually 10 or 11 o'clock, I don't mind because I get the work done. I enjoy doing it. You kind of get in this flow state, right? And that's just, that's how I like to do things. If I need to create a schedule for myself, and a tight schedule, mind you, I always keep a loose schedule, but a tight schedule for myself, then I do it. But other, other than that, I just, you know, the night before, or the morning of, I write down, all right, I need to get X, Y, and Z done. I need to get this video done, this video mostly done. I may even be completing it today. I need to be doing some of the emails. I need to be doing some of the uh, first flight coffee stuff. Maybe go get it today if they roast it today, and things of that nature. So I always make sure that I write down what I need to get done, but it's not always a tight schedule like I have preached in previous videos because that's just... Not how I always like to run my day. If I'm working as a software engineer, then maybe so. Moving on, if you don't know by now, I own a coffee company named First Supply Coffee. You can get some coffee at uh, firstsupplycoffee.com if you're interested. But we typically ask our roasters to roast our coffee once a week. We put it on our order on a Monday. They typically roast it on a Tuesday or Wednesday, and then we pick it up and ship it out thereafter. And this is where the days kind of mesh together because day in the life, I just showed you what I did in the morning. 9.30 or 9 o'clock emails, 9.30 coding, ends at 12 or two, and then I take a break and then lunch. However, packaging of the coffee needs to get done in the mornings because I need to make sure that I ship it out by 4 p.m. because that's when the post office closes. So when I'm not doing the coding aspect of things, I come in and I do the first supply coffee packaging aspect of things. Make sure that's all nice and taped up. We take a good old bag of First Supply coffee here. This is a single bag order. We drop that in. And now normally I have everything on the table here, but since I'm recording, I threw my, uh, my packing protection. This is crinkle paper here. It makes things look nice. It also keeps the uh, bag of coffee nice and secure within the box. And then to just simply show our appreciation, we throw a handwritten thank you card within every single order just to let you know that we appreciate you supporting us in First Supply Coffee. We go ahead and make sure this is nice and taped up. Throw it off to the side and then on to the next one until we've completed all of our orders. Throw on the packing slip, 
take them on down to the post office. I've actually been doing a lot of brainstorming and kind of what's next for the company. And in a perfect world, we would be able to generate enough revenue in order to buy our own roaster and get our own warehouse space. That way we can start experimenting with different types of beans and roasting different types of beans from different areas and testing out new blends you know getting flavors from this area like Guatemala and this flavor from this area like Peru or wherever we end up getting the beans and mixing those flavors together and figuring out the best roast for them medium roast dark roast whatever it may be and that that's that's what that's kind of the dream, the next step for this uh, company that I hope to, to happen. And then we would also like to add a dark roast to the lineup next. I'm not, I'm not really much of a light roast guy. Right now, if you don't know, it's just this coffee right here. It's a medium roast. And while I really like this coffee, it's some of my favorite coffee I've ever tasted, I also really like dark roast. So I want that to be the next addition to the lineup, whether that be with our current roaster, we add the dark roast, or whether that be with our own roaster and like, like our own, we're roasting our own coffee beans. It, that has yet to be determined. It just depends on kind of how the business goes and that'll determine which route we take. After all the emails and the coding and the coffee business and whatever else came up throughout the day, it's time to start recording and editing and uploading and creating thumbnails and basically anything that goes into the video aspect of the YouTube channel, that's what I gotta do. And that could take anywhere from a couple hours to a couple days and on the rarest of occasions a couple weeks even up to past a month the way i normally work is once i record the video i'll come on into premiere let's take a look i export all my footage into what i like to consider an organized directory into the appropriate folder for this video and this is all the footage right here that some you may see some you may not and then for that, I throw it on into Premiere Pro. This is my whole entire edit as it sits. Obviously it's not all the way done, but I typically like to trim down what I recorded off the get because sometimes I will do multiple different takes. And if I'm able to edit what I just recorded right after, everything is fresh in my mind. Okay, I messed up on this particular take three times. So I need to make sure that I skip over those three times and hit the fourth one because now I don't, I'm not gonna be wasting time Rewatching me mess up the take again and again and again. I can skip all of those, trim it down, and now I have basically the outline of my video. From there on out, what I will do is I'll go in and do any B-roll if I need to, you know, record me typing on the computer, or I need to integrate any overlays or any graphics, something that applies to help the, to help better tell the story in which I'm trying to present, I will add that in on top. I mean, you've already seen a little bit, I'm not sure how well it'll come across right here, but this bit of pink that you may or may not be able to see, right around here, those are different types of overlay, overlays, and those overlays, like I said, allow me to better tell the story. And then I throw on the background music, I throw on any color grading and then I export it. And then I go on to create the thumbnail. I upload the video to YouTube. I schedule it for the next day or two to go live. I make sure that my end cards are in there. The things that you see at the end of the video that say, hey, watch this video or click this to subscribe, which by the way, if you haven't yet, be sure to subscribe, hit the like button if you do like this video. I incorporate the description, any links, and then I go down to the tag. I incorporate any tags that are applicable to the video that'll help the SEO when someone types in something in the YouTube search bar and then the video goes live I let it sit for 12 to 24 hours and then I hop on in down to the comment section and respond to your comments like I said not all of this is applicable to every single day I don't respond to comments every single day I don't upload a video every single day I don't edit each and every portion of that every single day which is why I have to tell you instead of show you